Hello everyone, this is Reverend D. Welcome to Truth Dimension. I'm a little out of breath today because I've just uh, done a bit of a tiny hike here just to get into some of God's creation and get into some nature. I figured it would be a, a more appropriate setting to be in um, since we're going to be discovering stuff like who is God? Does He think? What does He think? Does He feel? What does he feel? What's going on inside the mind of God? And what is going on inside the, the heart of God? Um, we're going to be talking about these things, answering those questions. And, and how those answers relate to yours and my relationship with God. Um, thank you so much again for, for, for joining me. I, I trust and I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to touch your heart and speak to you and reveal some things to you as he has with me. Um, I've been serving the Lord for some 35 years, um, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking tongues when I was uh, 13 years of age. And um, as the years have passed and progressed, I have learned more and more about God, who he is, and understood more and more um, the grace of God, um, the, the old song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Through the years has become much more real to me because I now understand much more deeply and I believe so much more still to come about how much His grace really is. It far extends further than we can even imagine or comprehend or even begin to think. And I want to spend some time around those thoughts of what is God thinking and what is he feeling? Uh, what's going on in his heart and in his mind? And also discover who he is and what he is. First um, Samuel 2.35 talks about, and it's God speaking, he talks about raising up a servant that is going to um, do according to that which is in God's heart and in his mind. Uh, in other words, he's going to allow us to tap into what God is, what, what he is feeling and what he is thinking, and he's giving us the opportunity to do that. What a privilege. And, but before we can even begin to think and feel what God thinks and what he feels, we need to understand who and what God is. And the book of, or should I say the epistle of John, 1 John, excuse me for moving around, 1 John, and uh, I believe it's chapter 4 and 5, speaks about God being love. God is love. It says that if we love, like God loves us, then God himself is in us. And if God is in us, then his love is in us, and that love will overflow out of us, through us, and even as us, into the lives of other people. And so if God is love, then I suppose what we need to do next is discover what is love. Now we're not talking about um, romantic love or erotic love. We're talking about unconditional love compassion and care and concern for somebody a deep concern a god kind of love the agape love of god that kind of love and i believe the easiest way to 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 discover that is if we read um in first corinthians 13 and it is from verse 4 and i'm just picking up my bible here and it says the following Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love never fails. But we've just learned that 
God is love. So let's read that verse again. And we'll change the word love for the word God. Listen up. God is patient and kind. God is not jealous of you. He's jealous for you though. God is not jealous or boastful or proud. God is not rude. God does not demand his own way. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force his will on you. You get to choose. Love never gives up. Um, love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. Or should I say, God never gives up. God never loses faith. God is always hopeful. God endures through every circumstance. And God never fails. Wow. If we get the revelation that God is love, and love is all those things, and He's patient, and, he, and God is kind, and he, he doesn't keep a record of all the wrongs, and He always wants the best for us, and He loves us unconditionally, irrespective of who we are and what we've been doing. God loves us even when He doesn't like sometimes the things that we get up to. Uh, God loves us irrespective of our color, irrespective of our culture. God loves us irrespective of our creed, irrespective of our philosophies. God loves us irrespective of our different theologies. God even loves us irrespective of our different religions. God is not a respecter of persons and God doesn't, isn't phased by people that that don't quite understand him yet. We're all God's children and he loves us. Just like a father loves children. And, and if God is a father, a perfect example of a parent. Uh, parents overlook so much that their children do. Uh, and so does God. It says in, in Psalm 10, 103, I, I forget the verse now. I'll give it to you later. He says that um, he doesn't even punish us like sometimes we deserve. He overlooks all our wrongs, not all our wrongs. He overlooks a lot of things. Um, he is our Father. He knows that we are just human and that we're made of dust. He gets it. And irrespective of all our faults, irrespective of all our mistakes and our shortcomings, irrespective of, of all our scars and, and, and wounds and brokenness, he still loves us. The question is, do we know it? I know that if, if God is such a loving person that I want to have a relationship with that God, and it is sometimes different to the, to the picture of God that has, been, that has been painted by so many religions of some old white guy with a long white beard sitting on a throne somewhere with a lightning bolt in his hand just waiting for us to make a mistake. So that he can zap us and whip us back into shape. That's not the God of the Bible, friends. The God of the Bible is compassion in, in the flesh. It's compassion impersonated. It is love in the person. It is love. 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 And with a God that loves us so much and a God that is like that. I want to have a relationship with that kind of God. Do you? Well, if you do, then uh, if you'd allow me to, to introduce you to him, that's what this channel is all about. And uh, it's going to be an interesting journey. Um, if already you've felt the Holy Spirit tugging in your heart, that, wow, how I need to know that God, then I will pray with you. With a God like that living on the inside of you, he promises this. He promises that he'll fix you. He'll fix everything about you. And he'll fix any situation that you find yourself in. He'll take care of you. If that is the God that you would like to serve, I would like you to pray this prayer with me. And you just receive the Lord into your heart. You say, Lord Jesus. 
Forgive me for my old life and sins and mistakes and mess-ups. I know I need you as a savior. I know that I need a God that can fix it all for me and fix me up. So I ask you to come into my heart. Come and make your throne in my life and in my heart. I give you first place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if you've prayed that prayer, I believe that right now you're born again, you're saved, and you're a child of God, and you're my brother and you're my sister. Let's walk this road together and see where God leads us on this adventure that is called life. Amen. Have a good day. Have a great uh, life. Until next we meet, be blessed. See you next time.